we are looking at a really distinct conversion of two habitat types. Mark's hillside here is uh, mostly hardwood. There's a nice bottom here that's got a lot of more thick briars and brambles and some thicker vegetation, but as it goes up the elevation, it's gonna get more open. And right directly behind Casey is a mid-successional stand of mixed hardwoods, but probably 80 to 90% Eastern red cedar. And I wanted to stop here and, and make a distinction and point this. First of all, the two convergence here, edges are always everything in Whitetail's world. But to point out, Mark and I were having a conversation. I said, let's stop because there's a lot um, that we're currently saying right now that's gonna be relative to this whole, this whole conversation. We were at Kale's parents' uh, farm in Nebraska and uh, big draws behind their house, 90% cedar. And when his father first bought that farm, those cedars were probably this size or smaller, and he, that's where the whitetails were. That's where his bucks were bedding, and he enjoyed that And for years and years. And what has happened over 25 years, those things got up to a size, kind of like the frog in the pot. You turn the heat up slowly, and you don't realize you're getting boiled. That's what happened to him over time with the cedars. Is he loved those cedars, but what he didn't realize it, at, over time is they became a negative and they got too old and they lost their appeal, they lost their value because sunlight was no longer getting down to the ground between them. This age right here, we just started to say a, a deer can still walk through there. You've got enough vegetation that's growing in between them because the sun is still getting, getting down to the ground in there. It won't be another 10 years or so and that's gonna start happening the reverse. You're gonna get closed canopy in there, all that vegetation on the ground is gonna to begin to die the lower branches on those cedars will lose their green. They're just gonna be stick dead wood down there, uncomfortable to walk through. So there is something to be said about managing that stand. And that means to go in there and begin to deadfall and kill, or with your machine, go in there and grind and keep that spatial distancing between those. And the nice thing about that is you look on the ground and you always have got young cedars coming up in there, always. That just life cycle continues to perpetuate. But you can select some of your larger ones and when you can start seeing those things are growing too close together, you could drive in there and spend all day just selecting and spot killing every so often and just keep that uh, continual perpetual young succession of young cedars growing going in there as, you know, forever into perpetuity. But recognizing when you lose your vegetation in there, the sunlight is cut off, that begins to be a desert in there. We're in a spot right here we thought was a great example of uh, just below the cedar line, we've got a lot of young oaks in here regenerating and growing up, trying to reach the sun. And you look right here in the dead center of all this different age class of young oaks is a hickory. Now hickory is a, a good hardwood tree, but as far as the scale of preferability between all these white oaks and the hickory, we'll take the white oaks every day over them. We got white oaks, white oaks, shingle oaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then one big six inch diameter hickory right here. So, uh, and you can see he has a huge advantage of height over these other trees. In the midsummer, this thing is gonna be a shaded, 100% completely restricted sunlight off to these oaks. So we're gonna open the sky up and allow those guys to get that sun. And this guy is gonna lay over and provide some cover on the ground for a while. I'm gonna cut it high to not cut off these couple different deer trails that are running right alongside of it. But we're, ideally here, we're gonna get this hole in the sky open to these oaks to let them to do their thing and let this hickory continue to be cover on the ground, um, living cover on the ground. A lot of people these days, there's a bad rap going around about hinge cutting. Uh, hinge cutting is a tool we use with, along with dead falling and girdling. Hinge cutting can be a bad thing if you don't know what species you're cutting. If you just go into your timber and start cutting trees and, and bending them over, and it's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing too. Number one thing is to make sure you identify your trees and make sure you're not hinge cutting and destroying trees that have, are of great value to you. We're in a really cool little brushy bottom here and there's a lot of oaks in here, but if in between all the oaks is some scattering of uh, um, hedge apple and some locust and some hackberry primarily. And we're going in through here and just 
dead wooding or falling over or hinging where it's appropriate, these competitive species to give this, these oaks a chance, plus putting some more cover on the ground. Check it out, check it out.